Hi everyone, I'm Simona. Welcome back from lunch. Uh, everyone says that you should start your presentation with a joke. So I was trying to be funny. I'm not a very creative person. I'm not super funny. So uh, I hope you had your lunch like this. We're in a zoo, right? <laughs> Maybe animals are nicer than that. And I also hope that you're not going to be like that. <laughs> uh, I didn't expect as many people interested in the RxJS talk, given that in the other room there's the uh, V8 talk. So uh, uh, are you sure in, you're in the right room? <laughs> um, OK, cool. So uh, thank you, Rick, for the introduction. Uh, as, uh, my, my name is Simona. Uh, and as Rick mentioned, uh, I'm working for Microsoft, even though my badge says Arista Networks. I recently joined Microsoft as a developer advocate. Uh, prior to that, I was a full stack engineer uh, building um, network data visualization tools, which is super cool. I was using both Angular and uh, React for that. And uh, because I'm, super, I'm, I'm passionate about Angular, I uh, organized uh, in Dublin the Angular JS Meetup. And then I'm also an um, advocate for uh, women who code. And uh, I hope, I, I, I don't see, can I see the ladies in the room? Woohoo! <laughs> You're very strong. <laughs> uh, so as part of me being an advocate for women in tech, uh, I've been um, mentoring at workshops for women who code and NG girls. And I encourage all of you to do that because obviously I guess that all of us want more women in tech. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Simone underscore Cotin. And um, to set the right expectations, we're not at the VA talk again. Uh, we're going to quickly look into callbacks, uh, promises, uh, async await, async functions, and then uh, RxJS. And just a disclaimer, I'm not a RxJS uh, expert, so I'm just, uh, I found it interesting and I thought that I would share what I learned with you guys today. So, uh, I guess that when you saw this title and when you saw the presentation, you thought like the, one, the, the big word that we're looking at is asynchronous. And what, uh, it, like the shortcut for this is async. And um, what this means is just um, something that happens in the future. Like you need to take some time. And we're all at the JavaScript conference. So why is this important for us? Well, it's important because as most of you know, or maybe all of you know, uh, JavaScript is single-threaded, uh, which means that there's no two things that happen at the same time in JavaScript. So basically, um, you have to wait uh, for the execution to happen. And um, our users, on the other hand, uh, are behaving differently. Like they don't really care about JavaScript not being uh, being single-threaded. They're like, "Oh, I like this, and I want to do this, and I want to scroll there." And uh, this would put so much pressure on on JavaScript and uh, on our applications. And that's how uh, synchronous got uh, like born. <laughs> and um, yeah. Um, some examples of uh, async patterns are like the DOM events. Say, for example, uh, you have um, elements like buttons and you want to react to a click event. That would be uh, a type of a synchronous event. Uh, we also have AJAX uh, requests, and AJAX is a representation of an async pattern. And we also intervals or timeouts, they're, they're also async. And this, this brings me to the Hollywood principle. And can I get a show of hands for whoever, like everyone who dreamt of being an actor when they were a kid? Yeah? <laughs> well, I, I'm just joking. Like, how many of you have heard of the Hollywood principle? OK. Cool. So it's going to be news for you, for most of you. Uh, this principle refers to uh, the saying, don't call us, we're going to get back to you. 
and uh, it has been over time, it has been shortened to uh, don't call us, and it basically means uh, don't pursue your application further. So whenever the actors were going uh, auditioning for movies, uh, if they weren't good enough, or maybe um, the um, screenwriters were busy, they were like, yeah, don't call us, we're gonna call you, or maybe not. And uh, in our context, this basically means that uh, whenever we're executing code, so we're, uh, whenever we're at an async portion, like uh, it's gonna get um, executed and then uh, we're gonna come back to it whenever we have a response for that. And one uh, way of dealing with async is using callbacks, which is basically just a convention for using JavaScript func functions. And there, there's not uh, a special thing called a callback in JavaScript, basically. Uh, it's just a convention that we are using. And um, this is my first time in Amsterdam, right? And I was Googling uh, interesting facts about Amsterdam because I wanted to build a demo for this, which I didn't actually manage to do. But um, I, one of the things that I've discovered about Amsterdam and about Netherlands is that uh, um, it's one of the biggest importers or exporters of beer. It doesn't really matter which way goes, but Im the important part is that we have beer here. So in a, <laughs> uh, in a uh, callback, from a callback perspective, uh, let's say that uh, you want to fetch a beer, you want to drink a beer, right? And then you're specifically asking for this awesome beer, which is the Punk IPA. And then whenever you're receiving the details for that, you have a callback, which is a function that receives two parameters. And that can be uh, an error or the beer itself. And obviously there's two options. If you have an error, it's like, oh my God, no beer for us. Or uh, you just go ahead and drink the beer. But does this happen to you guys? <laughs> Whenever you're having a beer, it's like a never ending game. Let's have another one. And this is very similar to what happens with callbacks. Because you start simple and then you keep on chaining and you keep on chaining and you end up with this beautiful code which is so easy to read and it's so easy to reason about. Not. And this is basically what uh, everyone would call a uh, callback hell. And uh, that's because with callbacks, uh, you introduce a nonlinear control flow and uh, you are deferring to execute asynchronously, and you're using functions that are declared anonymously, and obviously you can have uh, arbitrarily nested levels. And all of, this, all of these features of callbacks is what makes the callback hell. So this means that we should look into something better, right? And that's when we've been promised uh, that we're gonna get something better. And a promise basically represents the result of an asynchronous operation. And uh, it can have three different uh, states. So whenever the promise uh, is, like the initial state of the promise is pending. And then you can either, uh, it can either be in the fulfilled state, which is, uh, a, it has been a successful operation, or uh, it can be in rejected state, which is basically a failed operation. And once the promise has been fulfilled or rejected, it becomes immutable, so it will never change. And yeah, the, what the, the important part to, th to remember about promises is that they only get executed, like you only get one value from them. And you can never switch from succe uh, success to failure, you cannot merge them, there's nothing you can do there. So this is how a basic uh, promise looks like. Um, there's um, basically you have the constructor and it receives as a parameter a function uh, with the resolve uh, and the reject. And if everything went well, we're just gonna resolve the, pro the, the promise with uh, the result, like the beer, Bank IPA, or we're gonna reject it and everyone's gonna be unhappy, super unhappy. And um, 
This is how you would use a promise. You call the then method on the promise, and you have a success function, and you have an a error function. So this is pretty basic, right? And then um, like the, the, down, the, the drawback with callbacks was the fact that you had uh, uh, the pyramid kind of uh, shaped code. And this is how chaining with promises looks like. It's a bit more readable. We do, I, I don't have here uh, error handling, but either way, like, it, it's, it's nicer to read. But it's still not the best option that we have available. Because if we um, like think for a second, like uh, DOM events, which is async, right? Uh, we might need uh, zero to n values. Like we might want to compose some of the values and with promises, because you only have a single value, you are not able to do that. So you cannot use promises with uh, DOM events. Animations? You want to be able to cancel them, right? Because they're extensive, like they're using their CPU extensive, and if uh, the user has changed their mind about something, you don't want to use, you want to stop the animations. Ajax, yay, you only want one value. But with single page applications, actually, I'm not sure for how many of you this has happened, but many times, um, when you have data-heavy applications and you are uh, retrieving lots of the data from the server, you actually end up, um, if the user moves away to a different tab, you have to find different ways to cancel uh, the, the request. So you have to add some kind of state that will track whether the data has been fetched, the user has moved to another page. So that, that's kind of complicated. So in reality, we actually need uh, a way to cancel Ajax requests as well. And then for WebSockets, you have zero to tons of values. So it looks like promises are not the solution. Surprise! <laughs> In all cases, obviously. And then there's the new kid on the block, which is the async uh, functions. And it's, uh, it's basically a new way to write asynchronous code, which is built on top of promises. And like promises, uh, it's non-blocking. And they're not that different from promises. It's just that uh, the code looks a bit more nicely. And it's uh, much more sim similar to the synchronously looking code. And uh, it's less clever. So this is an example of how a simple async function looks like. Um, you need to declare the function using the async keyword. And you can then use await within the function. And when you await a promise, the function is paused in a non-blocking way until the promise settles. And um, as you can see, there even the chaining looks very, like it's natural to read, it's easy to reason about, it looks very nice. And error handling is much better than with promises as well. And you can see here a difference between uh, using async functions and using promises. I, I much prefer the first version. What about you guys? Yeah? Looks nice, nicer. And this is an animation that uh, Wasim created. I'm not sure how many of you guys have seen it on Twitter. It's been around for a while. And it basically showcases just the readability of the code. And yeah, it's interesting to see that um, promises and async functions look kind of similar, um, but I still believe, like, it's, it's a personal choice, really, I think. I just moved to London, <laughs> so I had to use the queen, right, until she's still alive. <laughs> so, yeah. What, what am I trying to say? Like, we've looked at callbacks, they were the way to do things, not any more promises, and then async await. It, it's not even in ES6, it's actually uh, being in the ES7 specification, and it's available in some of the, um, like in TypeScript, you already have uh, async functions, and you also have them in uh, Babel, I think, and it's available in Node 8. So, yeah. Um, I was here to talk about reactive programming, right? <laughs> and uh, why is reacting, pro what, what is reactive programming? It's basically programming with uh, event streams. And 
What's an event stream? Uh, it's basically a sequence of events that are happening over time. And what's cool about um, reactive programming is that we can take this stream of events and we can subscribe to it and we can react to the events that are happening. And why is reactive programming better? Well, because it's it's cool, it sounds cool. <laughs> it sounds similar to React, so. <laughs> uh, but also, uh, you can define a dynamic uh, behavior of a value at declaration time. It's also very functional friendly, so you can, you can write functional code um, in, yeah, in JavaScript. And uh, it's nice that you get all the immutability and uh, state management of, func of functional programming, that, like the benefits. And then obviously with that comes better performance uh, and you have more concise code because you have the tooling around it, which is quite cool. So what about RxJS? How many of you have used RxJS before? Okay, cool. Are you guys Angular developers? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's that's how I got to. Uh, that's how I got in touch with RxJS as well. So basically, RxJS is Lodash for events. Are you guys familiar with Lodash? Yeah, cool. Um, and. What uh, RxJS is, is basically a um, function of reactive programming and then you get to treat events as collection, which is really cool because then when they're collections, you can manipulate these events with uh, operators that are available in RxJS. And the core concepts uh, in RxJS are observables and then observers and operators, like the three O's. <laughs> and what are observables? Well, they're, first of all, they're the foundation of uh, RxJS. Uh, they're basically, like, they represent the idea of an invocable collection of future values or events. And what this means is that uh, at declaration time, so for example, when you're defining um, uh, an observable, you can, um, you can define how your object is going to behave in time. So you're going to give future values or future yeah, behavior. And then uh, observables are a push-based kind of object. And in fact, observables and observers, they sound kind of like, like the design pattern very popular observer design pattern, where the observable is the, uh, um, the party that pushes notifications, pushes values, and the observer is the one that uh, consumes the values. And this is how you would create uh, an observable. Uh, and this is a very uh, low level way to do it. Uh, basically, you use the create operator and then um, the, the, the constructor receives an observable as a parameter. And then you can set, like you can um, send the values for the um, observer. And you have, um, you have three ways of doing that. So you can either uh, feed the next value, like we do here. After one second, uh, we are saying hello. And uh, you can also uh, send an error or you can uh, send a completion uh, notification. And then uh, observables are lazy, so you have to uh, subscribe to an observable if you want to receive any kind of value. And uh, you do that by just calling subscribe on the, on the observable. And this will return a subscription which will allow you to later on unsubscribe, which will basically release your resources and all that. And um, this is a good thing to do, but then obviously if you're getting into more depth, you actually, it's not recommended to uh, call unsubscribe on the subscriber, because imagine if you have 10 observables in your, uh, well, you wouldn't add 10 observables in the same class because that wouldn't be best practices. But anyway, you don't want to just have to keep track of all your observables and have to unsubscribe. So normally what's, uh, 
what's recommended to do is to reason about your application. And for example, the take operator is a good example of that, where uh, basically you say that I want to take the first, uh, if you create a, an observable from an array, you're saying I want to take only the first four values and then I'm completing. And it's like, it's unsubscribing naturally. And then there's uh, the more interesting ways to create observables, and that's uh, using operators like from. And you can create an observable from an array. And the difference, like, obviously, you have arrays which are, which are like a set of values in space. So for example, if you do console log uh, on an array, uh, all the values will be displayed at, time, at, in, at the same time. And then uh, an observable of this array will actually display these data, uh, uh, this data over time. So every element will be displayed uh, at a single moment in time. And then you can also create observables from events. Like uh, you, you have a button and you want to react to the click event. So this means that you will uh, create an observable for that. Or you can even use promises to create observables. But I don't have an example for that. So ba basically, there are three types of values in an observable execution. And um, you can, uh, from an observable, you can emit zero to an infinite number of values. Uh, and once an error or a completion notification is sent, um, I've just been notified that I have 10 more minutes. Uh, nothing else, so once you have error or uh, completion, nothing else will be displayed. And the next notification uh, uh, sends just the value uh, from, for example, from the array, it will send one, two, three, four, whatever the values, and then uh, error will send the JavaScript error or exception, and completion, it just says, I'm done, I don't want to work with you anymore. Uh, what about observers? Observers are just consuming the uh, values coming from the observables. And they're uh, basically, they have, they're, they're this um, like function of callbacks where you have the uh, next uh, method where you deal with the value or the error and complete methods which um, like help you deal with these events. And the observer needs to be sent as a parameter to the subscribe function. And uh, uh, RxJS is actually uh, super powerful because of its operators. Even though the observable is the foundation, it's actually the operators that allow you to build powerful uh, applications. And uh, an operator is basically a pure function which takes uh, one observable as an input and it creates, it generates another observable as an output. And I, I wanted to show you guys this demo that Andre Stals created. And can you see much there? And he's basically showcasing here how you would uh, compose uh, observables to handle uh, multiple click um, kind of behavior. And what we do here is we uh, create an observable for a click event on a button, and then to, to see whether uh, how many clicks have been made, we just uh, create a buffer for that observer where we uh, we like we create an instance of all the clicks that have has have happened in the 250 milliseconds, and then this re the buffer operator returns an array, and then we can just map uh, the length of the array to a number, which will be uh, sent as an input to the filter operator, uh, and here we can just return all the elements that have more than two uh, clicks. And we do the same for the single click where you have uh, the filter operation, uh, operator, uh, it just returns when we have a single click. 
And then we have these two observables. We are subscribing and we are changing the text of the H2 element, which is here to the subsequent value, like one click or multiple clicks. And then we are merging the operators and clearing the uh, text in this method. So you can see here, hopefully. A click has happened. And then three clicks. And then two clicks. It's super addictive. <laughs> one more. Let's do one more. Yay. OK, so this was the demo that um, like uh, Andre has created multiple resources uh, around RxJS. Uh, you can check him out on, um, on egghead.io if you want to learn more about his one of the um, guys that is a main contributor to this library. So we've gone to the de through the small demo, and basically what you need to know is that there's so many operators, and like 60 plus, and um, you can find them in different categories, like the creation ones, which you've seen, the combination, the merge operation uh, operator, the f for filtering, and then you have conditional, and like there's so many. Um, and one way, they're, they're kind of complicated to, to understand. So um, text is not always very helpful. And for that, the RxJS team is using a thing called marble diagrams, where um, the first um, axis is the input observable, which has a series of values. And then you apply the multiply by 10 operator. And as you can see, we get uh, the, the value 40 and then the value 60. And because A is not a number, an error has happened there and the execution has stopped. And uh, this is used very heavily when trying to uh, explain or understand operators. And of course, there's challenges with reactive programming as well. Like it's, There's no solution for everything. There's no perfect uh, way to do things. And one of the most important ones is actually getting into the reactive mindset. And you basically need to give up the imperative way of coding, and you need to um, try to do the declarative way and use these crazy operators and all that. But in time, it pays off. And then uh, the APIs for RxJS are not necessarily the most friendly. The documentation has gotten much better but there's still a huge number of operators and it's hard to understand all of them and how they interact. Uh, and finally, debugging, which is crazy. <laughs> like, debugging is the best friend of a programmer, I guess. And unfortunately, with RxJS, it's not that easy. It's gotten better with RxJS 5, but um, we have to use console.log. So that's, that's terrible. <laughs> Uh, and breakpoints don't really help you. But they're working on an extension, on a Chrome extension, which will help us with that. So summary. Callbacks can take you in hell, or to hell, or uh, callbacks are not good enough for us. And then promises, they're good, but they're not always the right tool for what we want to do. So if you, ha if you want to build highly interactive applications and you have lots of data that's changing over time, your answer is reactive programming and maybe RxJS, but you can, there's different extensions, not only for JavaScript, there's extensions for Java and .NET and all of that, and you can use, use RxJS for that. And remember, <laughs> everything's a stream, right? This is, I think this is the most uh, like monumental. <laughs> uh, everyone knows everything's a stream. And that's everything I wanted to share with you guys. I hope you enjoyed my presentation. You didn't regret that you weren't at the V8 presentation. Thank you so much.